AstraZeneca, does it work? Is it safe? It's only for over 50s. No, it's only for over 60s. No, you can get it if you're under 40. What to believe? Who to believe? Confused? You're not alone. There's so much information out there. Some of it true, some of it not true, some of it misleading. But at the end of the day, you need to make a decision, an informed decision, to get AstraZeneca or wait for Pfizer. And to do this, you need facts, cold, hard facts. So in this video, we're gonna focus on just that. I'm gonna show you how you can weigh up the evidence for and against vaccination, specifically AstraZeneca. And just to be clear, I'm not being sponsored or paid to make this video. Hi guys, I'm Lane, your doctor on demand for down to work medical education designed to build your confidence and help you feel good about yourself. So let's be frank, COVID has got us by the balls, plain and simple. Essentially, we're on a sinking ship and the water is rising and rising. So what do we do? Well, there are lifeboats, but what if they're not perfect? What if there's no guarantee that getting in a lifeboat will lead you to safety? I guess this is where we need to weigh it up. If we stay on the ship, what's the likelihood of surviving first if we get on the lifeboat? In medicine, we call this sort of calculation in which you measure up the odds for and against something relative risk. So how does this apply to COVID vaccination? Well, if we think of COVID as the ship and vaccination as the lifeboat, the principle of weighing up the risk for and against is exactly the same. Now we'll look at the risk associated with the vaccinations in just a minute. But first, let's consider the baseline risk if you're not vaccinated. There are two parts to this. One, how likely are you to become infected with COVID? Well, this will most likely depend on your location and personal circumstances, such as what you do for work. And then secondly, if you do become infected with COVID, what's the risk of you getting complications? Let's assume for a moment you get the COVID infection. Statistically, the risk of dying is about 2 to 3%, and that risk gets higher the older you get. But death isn't the only complication. COVID can cause lots of other problems. Pneumonia. It can affect your heart. It increases your risk of blood clots by about tenfold. This is one nasty virus, and the Delta strain is the worst we've seen yet. So if you calculate the risk of you getting COVID, and then the risk of what might happen if you get COVID, I can tell you that the risk of complications is not zero not even close. But then you've also got to consider another possibility. What if you get COVID and you spread it to somebody else, a loved one? What if they get the complications? So status quo is not great. The ship is sinking. So now let's look at the alternative, the lifeboats. Well, we have two, Pfizer and AstraZeneca. So how do they compare? How effective are the vaccinations and how safe are they? Let's start with how effective they are. Let's look at two variables. Firstly, how well does each vaccine reduce the risk of getting a symptomatic infection? Basically, how effective is it at stopping you from getting COVID? And secondly, if the vaccine can't give 100% protection against getting COVID, then at least how effective is it in preventing complications that might result in hospitalisation or even worse, death? Both Pfizer and AstraZeneca have been shown to prevent symptomatic COVID infections in the majority of cases. Now, specifically, it's about 95% with Pfizer and about 75% with AstraZeneca. Now let's look at how effective the vaccinations are against developing complications to COVID. To do this, I'm looking at surveillance reports from the UK and these figures are accurate as of about mid-July 21. Now it's important to note the data is still emerging, but essentially after two doses of Pfizer or AstraZeneca, there is evidence to show a reduction in the rate of hospitalisation and death from COVID infection with both vaccines. So let's look now at the safety. So again, we really need to define what we mean by safety. And there are two things to consider here. One, we look at the likelihood of the mild short-lived effects or reactions to the vaccines. And two, uh, the likelihood of the more serious long-term side effects or reactions. Now, generally speaking, when side effects are only mild and short-lived and there really isn't any significant associated health risk to an individual, then we wouldn't deem something as being dangerous or unsafe. And with both the Pfizer and AstraZeneca, mild side effects are really common. Up to 65% of people have experienced some pain and tenderness at the injection site. At least 10% of people are reporting getting headaches or a bit of fever, even some mild aches and pains. I felt really crook after my second Pfizer vaccine. It lasted about 12 hours. But when it comes to the serious long-term side effects, thankfully these are very rare. Now, obviously with AstraZeneca, the concern has been blood clots. Just to be clear, the actual condition is called TTS, which stands for thrombosis with thrombocytopenia syndrome. It's a completely different type of blood clot and mechanism to something like DVT or deep vein thrombosis, which you might hear from people getting uh, when they go on planes for a long distance. TTS is a very rare complication. We're talking about two in 100,000 people. That said, 
when you start vaccinating hundreds of thousands of people across the country, we are gonna see some cases of TTS. So how do you put all this together and make a decision? Well, it really comes back to weighing up the risk. What's the risk of getting the vaccination versus the risk of not getting the vaccination? If we just look at people aged 18 to 40 in Australia, for every 100,000 who receive an AstraZeneca vaccine, we might expect two cases of TTS. Now let's compare that to the rate of complications that might occur if we have 100,000 people in the same age group who are unvaccinated against COVID. In an area where the likelihood of catching COVID in the community is very low, we might expect about 30 people out of 100,000 to become infected, of which two could require hospitalisation. But now if we move into an area where COVID is prevalent, such as in Melbourne and Sydney, where there has been cases of community transmission, the risk of not being vaccinated changes completely. If, God forbid, we ever see the rate of infection that they've seen in parts of Europe hitting Australia, then in the 18 to 40 year age group alone, the number of hospitalizations could be hitting the hundreds and the death rate would be much higher too. Now, just to be clear, nothing in this video is designed to replace individual health advice that you might have received. And I do strongly urge you to talk to a health professional about your own circumstances before you make any final decision about vaccination. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. And if you like this video and you wanna see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get updates on my weekly videos.